A couple from different backgrounds. One born in the island of Taiwan in East China, the other born in mainland China. Who had some preconceived notions and thoughts about each other, but regardless, met in a country that was foreign to the both of you and helped each other to not only see the world differently, but to build a business from scratch. If you could define your journey using one word, what would it be? Um, I think it would be unsettled. It's a non-stop. You know, we, uh, we find one subject and another, uh, but at the same time, they are relevant to each other, you know. H.C. Wang was born to a middle-class family in Taiwan. He went to an average school there, but his interests in physics and arts were always very outstanding, which led to him getting a higher education in industrial design. After graduating in Taiwan, he worked a few different jobs there, and he quickly realized that was his true passion. So in order to deepen his knowledge, he decided to come to America to get his master's degree here. Ye Wang was born in southwest China and was raised in the big metropolitan area of Shanghai. She was in love with arts ever since she was a little girl, but she was also very interested in designs and good in sciences, so architecture ended up being her choice. In 2009, after getting her college degree from a Chinese university, she relocated to Michigan in order to become a Masters of Architecture. At Cranbrook Academy of Art, a small but prominent educational community in the suburban area of Bloomfield Hills, Michigan, H.C. and Ye Lang ended up meeting each other. But we, we went to a very small town and there was very like, little like, classmate. And like each department we had like around like 15 people mm -hmm. so uh, in the first beginning it's, it's really hard uh, you have to like physically and mentally adjust yourself to you know to fit in the uh, environment new culture and even the food you know all kind of things Michigan is another world I right? know exactly exactly <laughs> and I was from tropical area so mm -hmm. it's even harder for me to you know get used to the weather especially winter <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, a half of year is winter. Yeah, I know. It's like, like the, the ice never melts. Just like accumulate, keep accumulating. How was your first interaction, though? Uh, I think, uh, <coughs> like, uh, because we speak the, the, the same language, Mandarin. Mm -hmm. I think that that uh, the, the memories are brought together in the first place. Uh, I I was in second grade. She was first, mm -hmm. and uh, sh when she got here, she. She like has no like real friends. I mean, of course, every, everyone's friendly, but you know, we, we barely speak English at a time, and uh, we depend on others to, to get like grocery stores, uh, even to get like post office. So, uh, so one of her friends know I was uh, the other few like people can speak Mandarin, so introduce her to me in a in a like welcome party. And also, he he had a car which yes. is very <laughs> important for me at that time. At that situation, <laughs> people help each other, you know, for sure, especially for like international students. Absolutely. Uh, we, we can understand the, 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 the difficulty. So, would you say that it got easier after the two of you met, the whole experience, the whole first international experience? Like s something you can really discuss, discuss with, uh, like um, culturally or like, like, like philosophy. Like we have similar like uh, culture background, I would say. Language was a barrier mm -hmm. for us, and uh, you sometimes, barrier, yeah, yeah sometimes very, you want to say beginning. something, but people can could get it wrong because because yeah. of the language. Yeah. And I think that's most important thing. Like mentally, we support each other the time, and that's make us like very like stable. Mm -hmm. like, and close, yeah. And close, yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and I know that you had some preconceived notions about one another, you know, you being from mainland China and you being from Taiwan, you kind of like looked at people from those areas with a little bit of, you know, preconceived notions and thoughts. Definitely. Did you think that that affected the relationship between the two of you? Uh, it did, but uh, not a lot, I would say, because we, the place we met, in, which is the US, like everything is new to us. So we were like extremely open-minded, like 
for example, once my best friend is like is uh, Korean, and uh, I know like s people from like uh, uh, India and uh, over the world. So I would say if we met in different place like in Taiwan or China, mm -hmm. probably would be very different. Yeah. But mm -hmm. I think because the the philosophy and the, and the culture behind like the United States and the place we met each other uh, actually didn't affect a lot. I would say. Actually, both of us are very, like, I can say, like, curious at the time. And very open-minded. Open-minded, yeah, totally. So, so uh, I just treat her as a, a different person, you know, like, uh, we have, we, uh, except we speak the same language. I just, like, treat her as a new, a new friend we met, like, mm -hmm. I met. Yeah. And that's good, because if you don't have an open mind, you know, like yeah. you're not going to be successful here at all. You really have to have an open mind. Yeah, that's I, true. Yeah. I would say that changed yeah. everything, totally. Although HC and Ye both come from the east side of the globe, their home countries are so very different in so many aspects. Taiwan is certainly smaller than China. In economic terms, the two countries are also different. And while Chinese Mandarin is widely used by the Chinese and the Taiwanese, there are differences in accent. The political freedom is not the same in those countries either. And when it comes to the characteristics of the people living in Taiwan and in China, rumor has that they are very much contrasting as well. Here, I would say it's more, it's more like a fusion mm -hmm. of different culture, of different uh, people. And Taiwan is more like a, it's basically less like a fusion of different culture. People follow similar paths, you know, mm -hmm. went to school and study hard. Everybody study hard and really fight to get in few like a top enterprise, you know, uh, very few people. I mean, probably people start changing, but yeah. I would say not, not, not enough yet. Yeah. So pretty much everyone follows a similar path, right? Like they try to achieve similar. I would say like probably 90% 90, 90 of yeah. people. Very traditional, right? Like yeah, very, very traditional. traditional. Yeah. What about you? Like, what are some differences that you have seen? You know. Yeah, I mean, for mainland China, and we we have people there have a lot of like preconceived opinions about Taiwanese, and um, but you know, uh, if you met them, if you uh, really experienced the real the cultural, yeah, yeah you, you will know, you will know the truth, and you will know uh, the the difference, and also the people. The real people, and um, also I think it's for me it's very um, familiar with actually because I'm from mainland China and um, uh, I have a background which is very um, uh, diverse mm -hmm. and we have a lot lot of like majority people there. We also have different dialect and languages in, in mainland China, so I'm I feel very comfortable here. So. Yeah, but what are some things that you would say that you experienced growing up that perhaps he didn't experience or vice versa? You know, some things that were, was only present in China, some things that were a little bit different about the China. You know, I actually, uh, I do have some, like just my personal opinion, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, because of her, I, I, I know a lot of uh, like friends from in China. Yeah. And uh, from my understanding, uh, some of them like really open minded. They have, they don't have a like a past set in their mind. Mm -hmm. They uh, they really feel free to to pursue whatever they want. And I mean, I'm I'm saying for everyone, but I'm just saying like, uh, of course, like men in China is a uh, is more like to work communism. But mm -hmm. like in the in the past two decades, like three decades, I would say, uh, uh, they just opened up like, yeah. you know. So it's. A lot of possibilities. I would say it's almost a new country right now, like, you know. So mm -hmm. uh, people like like you, you know, there wasn't a lot of like uh, student from China for our, for uh, for example our school. We mm -hmm. have even no even one Chinese student like many Chinese student mm -hmm. uh, for like past like five to five to ten years, and mm -hmm. suddenly just a lot of like many Chinese like showed up. So for me, it's like a, a lot of people choose like start choosing different paths, you know. 
Yeah, it's like a booming right now. It's like a booming. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> a few things have changed so much in the world, like Asia has, you know, over the past 20 years. So right. it really is a crazy, mm-hmm. crazy change <laughs> in development. Mm-hmm. So. Today, because of differences between China and Taiwan, in addition to traditional values and principles coming from both countries, a marriage between a Taiwanese and a Chinese person can cause a lot of discord between the involved families. Luckily for HC and yeah, that wasn't the case. They're, they're, they have big hearted and they open minded to everything and um, they never push me. Mm-hmm. And um, they always let me to decide what it, what I want and what I wanted to uh, pursue in. So I, I think I got lucky. I think so too. <laughs> no, <what I> hear. <laughs> <laughs> me too, me too. I mean, I was very surprised like her family was like very open-minded. I mean, there was the uh, same thing in my family too. My, my parents... Uh, they only give a suggestion, like they never like set a path for you. And just uh, they give a suggestion, uh, but then you decide yourself. And I was, I would say, like I almost was scared. Like I was scared to to meet her family before we really go to China. Uh, you were so nervous. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was I was kind of scared, but the time I met them, it's like uh, it's just like meeting my meeting my like family too, like my parents. So and actually, my parents went to her. Her, f- her mm, place, mm-hmm. her parents met her parents uh, before we get married uh, because you know it's it's kind of traditional things for like Chinese to like two families met before oh, yeah. mm-hmm. they get married and uh, and they have a like really really good experience. My my father says like almost like a uh, his his brother or something you know. Yeah, like they're getting together. They're getting philosophy. along very well. That's yeah. so great. I guess this point we just really really lucky like. Like both of our family, like like hundred percent supporting us. Uh, they they not they don't have a like a setting stone. Like you you have mm-hmm. to marry some kind of people or you have to have some kind of past. As long yeah. as the person you met is honest it's and understanding and not a bomb. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. No, yeah. So tell me a little bit about the wedding. I know that modern day relationships don't really get to have, you know, a lot of luxuries, Mm. such as a honeymoon even. Tell me about it. Yeah. um, It was hard. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it was very hard. Um, We were were not very familiar with the process in America for the marriage. So Mm. um, we just go to, we just went to the city clerk. City hall. Mm. Oh, city city clerk. City clerk, okay. Yeah, city clerk and get the, the, re- the the registration form, yeah. mm-hmm. and you had to fill in the form first, and I we we totally forgot about it. We didn't know we, yeah, uh, we didn't know we can get married like like right away. Like you yeah. have to wait. Yeah. Oh yeah, twenty four hours or something mm-hmm. like that. So we didn't get registered right away. So we just put away the paper and then waited. And she we had a day off on Monday, but. We thought we can finish on everything Monday, yeah. but uh, it wasn't like a plan. Uh, they so told me like we have to, to wait DC. 24 hours, but we didn't. She didn't. She didn't have a Tuesday off. You have to go back. Yeah. So, uh, mm-hmm. so we thought we can just get married like on site, but and then we know uh, we have to wait. So let's say like we just like she just say like hey why don't we just have a like a, a wedding? Probably mm-hmm. not a like crazy big wedding but just like a few friends gathered together mm, yeah. Yeah. so we planned for a little bit probably two weeks <laughs> two weeks yeah right it's very Funny. very short and at a time at the same time i was uh i was got invited to, uh, for a, a fair in, in germany mm-hmm. and that was like only a month after our wedding so it's oh. every schedule is extremely tight i we were in a in a workshop uh uh, you know, talk to our uh, contractor, like because we had to build things for a show. And I still remember, like the the carpenter told us, like you guys are getting married like Next two weeks. Week. What yeah. are you guys doing here? <laughs> <laughs> and we spent like whole afternoon there because you know there are a lot of details we have. Uh, there there are some mistake we have to correct it. And uh, but only sad, sad thing is uh, because of our tight schedule, and she only have like limited like. Like one day, pay day um, off. Yeah. So uh, she went back to DC like right after the wedding, and oh, we didn't have a chance to 
to to see each other again, like for before the exhibition, mm -hmm. because we're just too busy. I mean, I I was like going over the place to you know to contractor uh, to uh, to like shipping company every everybody. So uh, and she went to so the just like imagine yeah. like you never see your wife after a wedding like for like a month and. We wow. finally had a chance to to meet to meet again in the airport. Mm -hmm. So that's the story. And and the place we uh, we travel to is not for our honeymoon; it's for work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>
uh, sort out what to should do first and what next and what's more important than the others. Yeah. What is the best part though? What is the most important thing that you learn from each other on a daily basis? I think we are very a uh, similar person but at the same time focus on very different subjects. Mm -hmm. Like she always work on a huge like building or like residential uh, mm -hmm. uh, structure thing, architecture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I always wo always working on uh, smaller stuff like uh, furniture or sometimes even accessories. But um, our past personality is she always taking care of the details. Mm -hmm. uh, he o he's perfect on like detail and things. I always look at a big picture uh, sometimes, I mean, I'm very determined. She is patient, but I'm like, I'm determined, but I'm fussy. But she, she's <laughs> determined, but she gets lost sometimes. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a perfect cover up. Just not like our, like, yeah. sh like I, I, c I cover her, uh, him sometimes, and he cover me. Yeah, it's a perfect cover. <laughs> yeah, I think at this at this thing we just got lucky. Yeah. <laughs> well, how is it managing such a busy schedule on a daily basis? Um, and so. As an architectural designer, um, I had my um, daily job, it, uh, which is very re relatively um, stable and mm -hmm. routine. So you know, and so I have regular um, night time, or and I have time to um, help him, and um, he's taking care of um, most of part of our studio stuff. Like his, uh, so I'm I'm doing my sporting role, like yeah. uh, like execution, I would say. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. So I'm doing social networking, and I have some resources out um, back in China. So um, I was taking care of the um, manufacturer and fabricator communications. Because, yeah. because she's an architect, she had a lot of content about like contractor, or, like furniture builder, uh -huh. or. They have like I have a curator for like accessory to you know for mm -hmm. interior things. So um, you know I wasn't like very social guy, but she knows it a lot. So she take care of a lot of this kind of thing. And of course uh, we we design together. I mean I I would do the execution, but of course every every time we have a new idea or we have a new design, I I've talked to her like you know show her some drawings and give ideas. I will change like you know we, we will mm -hmm. combine both our uh, ideas or thinkings and to make a change 